friends, welcome back to Llama Mama Kayla's Yarn Tube. I'm Kayla, and I want to say thank you so very much for stopping by and hanging out with me today while I am working on my sweetheart rectangle granny blanket. Um, I just appreciate you being here. I enjoyed visiting with you guys, and I really am enjoying all your questions. And even though some of them might be a repeat, you know, that's okay. I'll just, you know, try to answer it or try to say that it was in another video. Um, you know, I know that not everybody can watch every single video all the way to the end. And some of these videos are really long. So, that's okay. I understand. I get it. I get it. I'm just glad you're here right now. Okay, guys? <laughs> um, but I'm loving the way this blanket is turning out. So... I started off with three granny squares, and today is day seven of working on this blanket. So, you are very much welcome to go back to my channel, click on my name, and go to my channel and see the previous videos of this blanket. Um, there's all the way up till today. This is number seven. So, if you want to, you know, know more about how it got started and things like that. But, um... Yeah, I took three granny squares. I did five rows for these granny squares. Uh, one, two, three, four, five. I ended each one in the white. And then I joined them together. So I had this little strip. And then I just started my granny round around it. The granny stitch around it. So, and this is the way it's growing. And so, I, because I know that my skeins of yarn eventually as I use them they're not going to reach all the way around so I needed needed it to start being more random and I didn't want to get so far into it and then start the random because then I think it would look oddly random <laughs> I want it to look like it's purposely random and it is okay so what I'm what I did was I went in this sequence order here the pink a darker pink a fuchsia a purple a white a variegated that has all these colors kind of mixed in it a light gray and so then after that I did one more row of all the colors and then I started my randomness and so I started with the pink and it went I don't know where it started at but it went around and it changed over here to the darker pink and just went on around until it changed again and eventually um, I got to this fuchsia here so I went around in that fuchsia and eventually that turned in right here it turned into the purple and then um, Let's see, somewhere my purple changed, I don't know, to the white? <laughs> yes, my purple changed to the white here. And so I've just been, I've been, went around in the white. And then it changed to the uh, variegated. So here it started the variegated. So these balls that I've just made, they're not going all the way around. And I don't know, I didn't weigh any of these balls, but I'd say they're probably roughly about a one ounce ball some of them are wound they all look about the same size but some are wound tight and some are wound loose like this one is kind of loose so um but they're roughly about a one ounce ball or so and that's just me guessing not that i'm a great guesser or anything but i just know that in the past when i did a yarn thing a yarn swap thingy and we did one ounce balls that's about what size they were and then it just depends on if they're wound tight or loose but anyway that's where i'm at and i am loving how this is turning out it is beautiful and if you want to jump in and start making a scrappy blanket like this you know just look in your yarn stash your floppies your you know your scrap balls and go from there it does not have to match this. You can do your own colors, your own center, and just have fun with it. You know, there's no rules. There's no rules. Just crochet. So, come along and crochet with me today while we have a little chat and crochet. I tell you what, y'all have the best 
questions. And we got some good questions today. Well, not quite as many, but it's still some good questions. And this video might be a little bit shorter um, because it was a it was a little bit less questions, and it probably will get that way throughout the month. But that's okay. I got the gift of gab. <laughs> and so, <laughs> um, anyway, I wrote down the questions. Some of the questions were all on the same topic, so I'm going to mix those in together. But I do appreciate your questions. And if you have a question you would like to ask me, put it in the comments below this video. And, um... We'll talk about it. We'll talk about it. And so, anyway, I'm just going to get started um, crocheting here and chatting. I will tell y'all that um, I do appreciate the prayer for my finger very, very much. Right now, it's not hurting as bad as it has been. Uh, today, or earlier, um, well, I'm recording this in the middle of the night. Let me think. <laughs> Tuesday. This finger was throbbing so bad. About midday, it was throbbing so bad. It was ice cold. I got in the bed and put a heating pad around my hand. I eventually fell asleep. And when I woke up, I was sweating. Like, my whole arm and hand was sweating. Except this finger was like ice. And it was throbbing so bad. And still, right now, it's cold. But it's not hurting like it was earlier. But it is painful to, like, use it to do stuff. So, let's just continue to pray for it. You know, and whatever happens, happens. Um, sometimes there's a bigger picture that we can't see. And we just don't know um, the plan, right? God's plan for us. And I hope his plan is not for me to use that finger. <laughs> I very well do. I do so bad. But anyway, guys, where it hurts the most is on this side over here along that and right here on this side. This side is not as painful. as I mean, I can touch that side. This side hurts to the touch and to bump it on anything. That side hurts from about halfway on around till the nail up into the nail there and about down to the first joint so and somebody said they'd never prayed for a middle finger before well i appreciate you praying for mine <laughs> i do appreciate that very much but anyway i'm gonna um start with answering some questions and just chatting with you guys oh let me see did i chain one yes i did I am doing a chain one in between my clusters. Some people do a chain one and some people don't chain one. There's no right way or wrong way to do it. Wh whatever you're accustomed to and whatever you like. Um, I don't know. I just I just do it. And I don't know why that I do it. I guess I learned that way. But um, anyway, I just always chain one in between my clusters. And some people do not do that. And theirs looks great so I don't know I don't think there's a right way or wrong way <laughs> just enjoy yourself okay so somebody asked the question of how our boys got their names well that's a great question okay so when I was pregnant with Dakota um I was sick throughout that whole pregnancy like threw up the whole time um I lost like 40 pounds right away. And I was in and out of the hospital. Cause they, and then they'd say, you know, like, if you gain three pounds, we'll let you go home. And gain those three pounds and go home and go back to my next doctor's visit. And we done lost that plus more. I mean, it was a, it was a really mess. I was just so sick the whole time I was pregnant with him. Um, And we had said... Well, at one point, the doctor said um, that she thought it was a girl because she did an emergency ultrasound in the ER. And she said she thought it was a girl. Now, okay, let me just say, I think ultrasound technicians 
who do that daily would probably be more accurate than a doctor who doesn't do it daily. I mean, I'm not saying she didn't know how. She did. She did it. But um, probably seeing things on the screen and knowing what you're looking at, she probably don't do that every day. Like a, um, a x-ray technician or ultrasound technician. I can't exactly come up with what they'd be called. Ultrasound technician or somebody who works in the radiology and all that kind of stuff. I think they would be more um, out to have a better guess. But anyway, she had mentioned that she thought it might be a girl. And Big Daddy ran with that. Told his mom and everybody, you know, was having a girl. And so, and I was like, well, she didn't say for sure. But he was just convinced that she did. And so, <laughs> I went with it too. And so, um, although I was hesitant at first, but our name we had picked out was Victoria Nicole. If he was, if the baby was a girl, well then my water broke five weeks early. And so I was in the hospital and had to have, um, emergency C-section. They were checking my temperature every hour on the hour and my temperature spiked. And so I had to have emergency C-section. And, um, afterwards, okay, so he was a boy, right? So afterwards, I didn't get to see him until the next morning. They took, they, they told me that, well, after a while, we'll come and get you and take you down to the nursery to see your baby. And I was just like, um, I'm going now. <laughs> so I'm getting up trying to make my way to the nursery to see my baby because um, I hadn't got to see him. And it had been a while. I can't remember exactly how long it had been, but I had somebody had brought me a picture that was not any good. It was a Polaroid picture that wasn't very clear. And so I knew that the baby was a boy, but we didn't talk about names. I was just worried about, is he okay? And all that kind of stuff, you know. And plus, I was in pain and I was in and out. Because um, this was back in 92. And so, um, I was in and out of it, you know. Anyway. So, I was getting up and going, making my way to the nursery to see this baby that I hadn't seen. But everybody else had seen. <laughs> and, um... Then they they came on with a wheelchair and got me and took me on down there. So I'm sitting there in the wheelchair, and Dakota is in this little plexiglass-looking bassinet type thing. I don't know. And so I could, and he had tubes all over him, IVs and tubes and all kinds of stuff. So I could just reach over and just kind of pet him with my finger. And he was tiny. He weighed four pounds. Um, he weighed five pounds when he was born. Now, he lost down to four something. But he um, was five pounds at that time, I guess. And so the nurse started talking about him. And she was calling him a name. And I was just like where did you get this name? <laughs> well, Big Daddy named him Morgan Dakota while I was out of it. He named him. And so, I was just like, okay, well, we never called him Morgan from the get-go. He's always been Dakota. He goes by Morgan now for legal. It's easier for legal. Like, when he started college, it was easier to to use his, you know, given name instead of Dakota. So, anyway, that's how he got his name. And, um, so there is, okay, I'll tell that part in a minute. Okay, so for Elijah, his name is Elijah Wyatt. So, we didn't know if he was having a boy or a girl. Um, did we find out? 
I can't even remember if finding out if he was a boy or a girl. You know, I think we might have found out just before he was born, like like maybe a month before he was born. So we had a boy name and a girl name. The girl name was Angela, I mean, um, Molly Denise, and the Denise part was going to be after my friend Angela. Her middle name is Denise. But anyway, that didn't work out. Maybe I'll get a, another cat named Denise. Um, <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Angela just rolled her eyes. Um, anyway. So I needed to pick a boy name, and, um... I was thinking of my mom's father's name was Ezra, and I do like history, and I like using history, you know, names from the past and stuff to keep the name going and stuff like that. His name was Ezra, um, but he died when she was young, and so I thought about using Ezra, and I was kind of playing around with that, and then somehow or another, Elijah just came into play, and so... We decided Elijah, and then we had to pick a middle name, and I was going to pick something to go with um, Big Daddy's father's name, but then, um, I don't know, we come across Wyatt, Elijah Wyatt, and I think Big Daddy might have said that, and so we went, I liked that, and so we went with it. Well, unbeknown to me, Big Daddy knew all along. That the Earp brothers is a um, White Earp, a Morgan Earp, and there's two more. I can't remember their names, but one of them is Virgil or something like that. So I was like, okay, well, no more Earp boys for us. <laughs> I can't remember the, th the third one's name, but I know there's Morgan, w Wyatt, Virgil. And there's another one that's like just a simple, ordinary name, I believe. But anyway, so that's how their names came to be. And, um, no more Earp boys for us. White and Morgan's enough. Now, Elijah's always went by Elijah. We've never called him anything else but Elijah. But I think some of his friends might call him, like, Eli. I'm not sure, um... But I've never called him that. I've never really heard anybody call him that. But um, I just I just got the feeling sometimes that some people call him that. <laughs> but anyway, it's okay. It's okay if they do. But it just sounds odd to me. So that's how they got their names. Uh, somebody asked, have I always had pets? Yes. I cannot remember a time in my life when I did not have a pet. I remember when I was three years old, I had a black chihuahua named Fancy. I don't remember how she got her name or anything like that, but I do remember being three years old and having Fancy. Um, we also had chickens and a cow at that time. I can't remember what else. I might have had... I think we had a cat because I have a picture of my sister holding a cat when at that same when we lived at that area. But anyway, um, I I cannot imagine myself not having a pet um, of some type anyway because yeah they just bring me joy and their comfort you know. And my pets always, you know, just take to me. When the kids growing up, if we got them a dog and it was their dog, I purposely would not have anything to do with that dog for as long as I could because I want, would want the dog to bond with them and not me. So I would purposely not touch the dog or just talk to the dog and it would kill me. It really would. It was hard. But I felt like I had to do that or the dog would bond with me. Like when Dakota was three 
Angela had a poodle that had puppies. Um, she bred her with uh, one of her mom's poodles and got some puppies because I wanted a poodle puppy so bad. So I had this poodle named Sugar. We got her for Dakota, but turns out Sugar did not like being chased by with lightsabers. And so she did not like Dakota. <laughs> Who knew a poodle wouldn't like a three-year-old? <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> she quickly become my dog. I mean, she she got attached to me and was my dog all the way, all the way. But um, and I had her like eleven years, and the poor thing, she she was up there in age, and she you know had some issues and all, but. She grieves herself for me. I still feel so bad about that. But Elijah was in the hospital. And he spent a week in the hospital. And I was, you know, talking to Dakota and Big Daddy all the time. You know, asking them how sugar was. Is she eating and all that stuff. And there was some outside cats. And they were trying to get sugar to eat. And she wouldn't. So they would let... One of those outside cats come in in hopes that she would eat to keep the cat from eating or whatever, you know. But she wouldn't. She just grieved herself because I wasn't here. And then I came, Elijah got out of the hospital. We came home for one night. And the next morning, we had to go back into the hospital. And so, oh gosh, I don't want to cry. But anyway, I, I lost her. I lost her, and she got real weak, and I come home and held her and told her it was okay to go. But I do hear people say, um, you know, like, if this animal, this pet dies, I won't be getting another one. You'll never hear those words out of my mouth. <laughs> when people say that, I'm like, oh, how can you live without a pet? But you'll never hear those words out of my mouth. I will always have to have a pet. Whether it be a dog or a cat. Now, cats seem to be easier to tend to. They just don't mind or care what you got to say or anything like that. <laughs> okay, somebody asked, what is a crochet project that I want to try that I haven't tried? I want to do the corner-to-corner -corner blanket. I've never done one. Um, when I, I looked... I, I attempted to do, like, the little square things or whatever, the triangles to make the square. But I couldn't see well enough to understand what I was supposed to be doing. So, I, I, need, to, I need to revisit that and just see um, if I'm able to do that. But I would like to do a corner-to-corner -corner blanket one day. And then maybe, you know, like do a solid color at first. And then maybe one day do a um, one with a graph in it. So, we'll see. That's on my radar. And who knows? It might be one of my monthly projects that I'm, you know, doing, trying to come up with. So, we'll see what happens. Okay, let's see. Um, somebody asked, do we have plans for the weekend? Okay, so today while you're watching this video, I'm in Shreveport. I have two doctor's appointments there. Um, I have my rheumatologist appointment at 10 o'clock this morning. And then I have an appointment with the my pain pump doctor at 1.30. So... Um, that's my two doctor's appointments for today. I don't know what else we're going to do while we're there. We'll have some time in between appointments to do whatever, whatever happens. <laughs> so for the weekend, um, there is a community rummage sale taking place. Um, and I do want to go to that, um, I knew they were having one or was wanting to have one. And then um, 
Big Daddy sent me the information about it and said we should go to support this group. And I totally agree. So we're going to go and try to support this group, see what they have and what we might can do. Um, and I think that's about the only... It might be raining, so I don't know if we have any other plans or not. Sometimes I say we don't have plans, and then guess what? He has plans. <laughs> I'm drinking some sweet tea. Right now, I'll just... Oh, uh, let's see what else. Okay, so... Oh, I am glad to know that I'm not the only one with a husband flipping channels. Several of you mentioned that, that your husbands do the same things and how that drives you crazy. <laughs> I'm so glad to know that my husband's not the only one sitting there flipping channels. Because honestly, I figured it was because he grew up without TV. Um, he grew up Pentecost and they did not have TV. His dad would bring TVs home. His mom would bust them or cut the cords and throw them out. And it was just crazy, crazy. Um, so he, when we got married, we had a little black and white TV and he watched that thing as if he was watching a big screen at the movies. And I, I still say to this day, I always say he's trying to make up for lost time. <laughs> now, I didn't have TV at first when I was growing up. We did not have TV. And one day... After school, we had this big living room that we never went in. We had a den, and that's where we were allowed to go. But we weren't allowed to go into the living room. And it had French doors on it, and they were kept closed. The furniture in there was um, nice, and my mom didn't want any kids in there on that furniture. <laughs> and so we did not go into that room. We weren't allowed to. The door stayed shut. One day after school, my sister and I were in the dining room. I don't even know what we were doing in there. But I, we were goofing off, just being stupid probably. And I kind of fell back into the French doors. And they came open and so I'm trying to like close those doors real fast, you know, because we're not supposed to go in there. And guess what I saw? I saw a huge console TV. You know, those kinds that it was a TV, but it had that cabinet wood. I don't know if they were really wood. Yeah, they were wood. Wood cabinet like built around it. And it was a big old huge 25 inch TV that sat on the floor, you know. We had one of those, and we did not know, and I told my sister, and she, I said, there's a TV in here, and she did not believe me. She said I was lying, and I'm like, no, there's a TV, come look, and she would not come look because she thought I was lying, and I finally convinced her to come and look, and we were both just so shocked to find out we had a TV. Isn't that silly? Like, thinking about that now, like, how did my parents get away with that? Like, they would go watch that TV at night? I don't know. <laughs> I have no idea. I think it was more of my dad than my mom that wanted the TV. But anyway, so the cat was out of the bag then. <laughs> right? Uh, I don't even remember, like... I don't remember us even telling our parents that we knew we had the TV because we weren't supposed to go in that room. So how was we going to tell that? So I don't remember how that came into play or how that came about. But yeah, we eventually was watching TV. We was coming home from school watching TV after that. And we might have done that secretly for a while. I can't really remember. It seems like that might be the case, but who knows? <laughs> So, I've always contributed his flipping 
to be that he grew up without TV and he's still trying to make up for lost time. But maybe not. If your husbands grew up with TV and they're flippers too, it might just be a husband thing, huh? Anyway, that was a fun memory. Okay, so moving on alone. Internet. Okay. So, several people mentioned internet and just different circumstances or whatever. Okay, where we live, we do not have an internet provider that services our address. I've called and called and checked on different places. And even one that said they would service our address once they really figured out where we live came back and said, no, we don't service that area. Um, so yeah, there are still some places that, you know, cannot get internet service. So we don't have a provider that provides internet to our, um, address. And I did check on that. Is it Elon Musk? Is that what it's called? That internet that he has, that satellite up in the sky, it's supposed to be really great lickety split fast internet and all that um Zeke's parents have that and so I talked to his dad about it but his dad said that he don't know that I would actually be able to use that internet because they are on the very outskirts of it like they're on the edge of being able to use it and so, um, he don't know that I would be able to get service from it or not. And that's a lot of money. I think it's about a $600 equipment thing. And then, that that's too much to not know that you're going to get the service, right? So, I could save up my YouTube's money and do that, but... I would hate to do that and then find out, oh, well, your service is crappy because you're outside the bounds, you know? So that that's a thought, but then it's also what's holding me back from even, you know, trying to do that. So, yeah. Anyway, and so that's why we don't do lives. It's because I'm using a hot spot that goes in and out, in and out, in and out. Um... It doesn't stay connected a lot. And then when you use up the hot spot, which I have mine, something's wrong with mine. And it, I can use it more than other people probably can use a hot spot. But it still is in and out, in and out. And then sometimes it don't work for a day or so. It just, um, it's an old phone that it's on. And if I switch to a newer phone, like I have... I have that phone purposely for hotspot and then I have my cell phone that I'm using to record this video right this moment um, and I can't get to switch to the hotspot on another phone it uses it up really fast and then you are out of hotspot data so I'm doing the best that I can <laughs> let's put it that way <laughs> And for not having internet and having to, you know, figure out ways to do things. And sometimes, you know, to upload a video, I have to ride up the road a ways. Get out of the woods and ride up to closer to the mall area or something to upload a video using data. And even right now, my data is used up and... It is so slow, like even to pull up anything on my phone is really slow right now because um, I have unlimited data, but once you get to that point where you've used a whole lot of data, they slow you way down, and I use a whole lot of data. <laughs> well, actually, what actually, I turn data off on this phone sometimes to save data, you know? I'll just turn it off and I don't have I don't have apps on this phone. I just I just don't do anything on the phone because I don't hold a phone and carry a phone around with me. So I don't have apps and I don't I just don't use my phone like other people do. Other people use their phone like it's their lifeline and I just 
don't. Mainly because um, I drop, when I pick up my phone, you <laughs> guarantee I'm going to drop it about three times in a row right then. And, you know, I don't want to shatter that screen, even though it's got a protection and all that on it. If it hits just right, it's going to break. And so I don't pick up the phone that much. My phone, unless I'm recording a video or doing something like this, my phone is in the bottom of my purse somewhere most of the time, okay? I have to purposely get my phone out to do something with it. It's not just like sitting around in my hands or anything like that. And where was I going with all this? <laughs> I don't know. I don't, oh, and so I turn my data off a lot, and I never do, like, upgrades and all that kind of stuff. Uh, Big Daddy had my phone the other day, and he did an upgrade. I probably had a thousand text messages come through, because I don't, you don't get all that if you don't have your data turned on. And so, I had about a thousand text messages come through, and I do need to, like, respond to some of them, but I just haven't yet. But, um, yeah, people probably think I ghosted them or whatever. But I just, um, I, I didn't know those text messages were there. They just come through all of a sudden. And then I kept asking him, I was like, what, why are you texting me? And he kept, te he kept texting me and kept texting me something. I was like, he was sitting in the same room with me. And I was like, why are you texting me? And he said, I didn't text you. And I'm like, you did. Like two minutes ago and then he texted me again I said look you just texted me again but it was because all that data was coming through <laughs> and it did that for the rest of that day all these text messages were coming through so yeah that's my life <laughs> and I'm okay with that I'm okay with that I, I don't I'm not one that wants to be on call 24 hours a day I'm, I'm not, like, mm-mm, that's not me. Some people like that, um, but not me. And Big Daddy often says, like, he'll come home from work, and he'll say, why do you even have a phone? You don't answer it. You don't look at text. <laughs> well, when I get ready to do something with a phone, I can. <laughs> but anyway... All right, so what was I going to? Sassy. Yes, yeah, Sassy Girl. That's the black cat. She is very much attached to me. So, so very spoiled. And Phoebe and Sissy are too. And I thought Phoebe was so spoiled. But Sassy is crazy spoiled. Like, she is possessive <laughs> for me. <laughs> And Sissy loves to be petted, too, and she loves my attention. But Sassy's the one that dominates my attention. And sometimes it's crazy. Sometimes it's like, oh, my gosh, cat, I need to breathe. I feel smothered by her sometimes. <laughs> but I do love her. And actually, January was a month that we've had Sissy and Sassy. We adopted them from the animal shelter. And so we've now had them a, not a month, did I say a month? A year. We've had them now for a full year. And so they have, uh, I can't even imagine life without them now, especially Sassy. I can't imagine being able to do, <laughs> do anything without her on me. <laughs> but she is the little dominator. She dominates me. She thinks she's the boss. When you have cats, they're definitely the boss. Definitely. But they're so fun to watch um, and play. And Phoebe tries to play with them. And they want to play with her, but then she scares them a little bit. And they're just like, is she trying to play or is she trying to kill me? They don't know. <laughs> I know her, and I know she's trying to play, but at times she don't want to play, and, you know, they're interested in her, and she, she don't want to play, but, 
Somebody asked, have I ever wrote poetry? Poetry. No, I have not. Now, I love poetry. When my kids were um, home, we would have poetry tea days, tea time poetry. And what we would do would be, um, we, we usually did that on like a Tuesday. And we would, um, we'd make tea, have snacks, make cookies or whatever ahead of time. And then we would have our poetry books. And we sometimes would, you know, be inside or if the weather was nice, we would sit outside and read poetry and talk about it and just have nice days and do our little poetry study. And that was sometimes my favorite day of the week, just doing that with the kids. It was. But anyway, um, but I've never wrote poetry myself. I wrote a little poem about dog hair one time when I was cleaning off my desk while all the animals were at the vet. <laughs> it was about long hair and short hair. And I did run across that here a while back. I have no idea where to find it now, but um, I did run across that a while back and laughed at it because I was cleaning off my desk and I just wrote a little poem about dog hair, <laughs> short hair, long hair. But um, moving on, let's see. Uh, somebody asked, do I crochet shawls? I haven't. Because I have a few shawls that people have made me and sent me that I just adore. And I have, a, you know, several of those. And so, um, when I, you know, wear one, I pull one of those out. And we're in Louisiana, so, I don't know. People, I don't know that people really wear shawls around here. Um, I never have seen anybody wearing a shawl. And so, I, I don't know what I would do with them if I did them, okay? <laughs> if I made shawls, I don't know what I'd do with them. So, I don't, I don't make any because um, I, just, I don't think people are interested in that here in Louisiana. Alright, let's see. Somebody asked, what is my favorite hymn? And I will tell you what exactly what my favorite hymn is it has been ever since i was a little girl and it is i shall not be moved that has always been my favorite hymn um and i cannot sing but it goes something like i shall not be moved i shall not be moved just like a tree standing by the water anyway i can't sing so you don't want to hear that All right, and then let's see what we got going on. Uh, somebody asked about music. What kind of music do I listen to? And then somebody else asked, what's my favorite song? Okay, so it depends on where I'm at and what's going on. I really love all music. Like, I don't snub any music because I think it's all has a place um no i don't i don't know there's certain songs or music or whatever that i might not want to listen to and i might would be like changing the changing the channel station or whatever but um i do really do love all music I, that's such a talent and i admire people who can do all that but um Big Daddy in the truck would listen to country. So anytime I was with him in the truck, we'd listen to country. And I grew up listening to country, old country music. Um, old country music, you know. So that's what I grew up on. And then, you know, as a teenager, I listened to rock. Loved me some rock and roll. Now, as my preference, it would be classic rock. I could listen to classic rock just probably about all day long. I mean, if somebody has a 
a store somewhere has a channel on classic rock you know i mean i could i can sing every song but not good <laughs> not well but i can sing those songs i know them they're my songs that's my jam is classic rock because somebody asked what was my jam now in our car the radio doesn't work in it we could never figure out why and i had both my boys at separate times to try i was like they'll be able to figure it out they could not figure out why it wouldn't work either so one day i was getting going to the car and there's some cds in the den there's like some dvd shells of dvds and then there's a whole row of cds and so i think those are mostly like my kids cds that they moved out and left them because, you know, they don't listen to CDs anymore. Um, but I grabbed one of those CDs and tried that in the car, and it played. So it will play CDs, but it will not play radio. And so, and it has something on there like some radio station that might be like a satellite radio. And I don't know if, um, I don't, I don't want to do no monthly I ain't, I'm not interested in doing that. But anyway, I don't even know if it would work. Because Big Daddy has decided. He said to me just about two weeks ago. He said, I think it is the antenna. We need to replace that antenna. And then I was like, well, you know, how much was the antenna? And it wasn't much. And I was like, okay. And then he said, but you have to pull this down on the inside of the car. You have to pull down the roof of the car on the inside that like the ceiling and i was like oh no no we're not doing that nope because it will never get fixed back exactly like it's supposed to go so no <laughs> we're not doing it <laughs> and but you know we did find out we could have cds in there so we got some cds and i got a cd uh for christmas i actually got it before christmas because i bought it for myself it is the Dolly Dolly Parton Rock and Roll CD, and it's actually two CDs in that case. And so, um, I got myself that as a little early Christmas gift. That's what I called it. I just got myself that, okay? <laughs> and we listened to that over and over and over, those two CDs in the car. I have some other CDs that I've put in the glove box, but... We never listen to them. We always listen to Dolly. And Big Daddy has found his favorite song on there. Is there's a song, and you can ask um, if you have that A L E X A thing or Google. You know, you can ask her, or you can look this up on YouTube and find it and listen to it. But there's a song called, I Dreamed About Elvis. It is the cutest song ever. It is so cute. We just, we sing that song and just giggle and laugh. I mean, it is so cute. So, I Dreamed About Elvis. And that is the song. When it comes on, Big Daddy will repeat it three or four times. But yeah, we love that song. And so Big Daddy has got off into Elvis lately. He's watched a bunch of older Elvis um, movies and all, and he's got um, he's got some Elvis songs on his phone that he plays when we're in the car. Cause you can't hook up your phone. I've never done it, but he does it. He'll hook up his phone and it plays through the car radio. Um. But yeah, he's into Elvis, watching Elvis movies and Elvis songs and stuff. Um, but anyway, let's see. Somebody asked what yarn weight do I use? This is the number four. All of this is number four weight yarn. And that is the yarn that I go to the most. It's the yarn that I have the most of. I do use bulky yarn. I do have bulky yarn that I use. And then I do use like um, some blanket yarn sometimes on projects. Um, and then also, 
I have like some three weight yarn that I've used on a couple of projects. So, yeah. And I don't use like fingering weight or sport weight, DK weight. I don't, I don't use any of that because I cannot use those tiny, tiny hooks. Um, I just, I just can't do it. So I'm comfortable doing what I'm doing. <laughs> Okay, so let's see. Um, okay, so somebody asked me a couple questions here. Would I rather see a sunrise or a sunset? I say a sunset. I mean, I see sunrises a good bit all the time anyway, but a pretty sunset cannot be beat, right? So I'm going to say a sunset. And then they asked, would I rather be or sea, or whatever, a rippling brook, or changing cloud shapes, a rippling brook, brook, I love water, I love being next to water, near water, um, I could sit by a mud hole and be happy, okay, um, and we got plenty of those, but no, I just, do enjoy water. I enjoy it like a river, a lake, a bayou, the gulf, ocean, whatever, you know. I, I do love water. I love being by water. I love hearing waves. So, yes. And then they asked about, do I enjoy nature? I do in the right temperatures. <laughs> Not when it's too cold. No one is too hot or too many bugs. Now, when my kids were little, we did nature studies all the time. Um, I, you know, I made sure I got them out with notebook. I mean, they they did spend a lot of time out playing outside. But I would also take them out with notebooks and their colored pencils. And we would uh, draw flowers and just whatever we saw in nature. Ladybugs or whatever bugs or trees or just the bark on the tree and we would label it and then talk about it later and look it up and just you know do little studies on it sometimes we would just pack bags of um you know our notebooks and pencils and magnifying glasses um just things like that we would pack all that stuff up and go to the park and spend the day doing nature studies so yeah we we did all that kind of stuff now i don't you know i'm not doing that so much that you know my kids are grown sitting in the house but I do have a little area that the boys had fixed me one time for a little nook out there to sit in I call it my crochet hook nook so when the weather is nice enough I do like to sit out there and crochet I filmed some videos out there um I have a little fire pit right in front of it so that um, you know, we could roast marshmallows or whatever. We used to do marshmallows and hot dogs all the time when the kids were growing up, but I mean, I couldn't eat a hot dog now if I, my life depended on it. And I, I might could eat a hot, oh, uh, I mean, not a hot dog, a uh, marshmallow if it was melty in the fire. I might could, I don't, I don't know, I hadn't eaten one in a good while. I probably hadn't had a marshmallow in, I don't know, a very long time. But I would like to try. <laughs> Sounds good to me. Oh, and you might have noticed in, somebody did tell me that February this year has got 29 days. You might have noticed in that video yesterday, I almost said that because I was thinking it was a leap year. But I was hesitant to say it because... I wasn't for sure, but yes, it is a leap year, so we have 29 days this month. Um, you know, normally we have 28 days in February, and I really did want Dakota to be born on leap year on the 29th, because the year he was born was a leap year, and um, I was, you know, going to be in the hospital until he was born, and I was hoping we could go until the 29th before he was born, but he 
he came on the 20th. So, anyway, yep. Well, anyway, guys, it is about an hour, and I just appreciate you all hanging with me. It's been fun. Next, what I'm going to do with my blanket is, well, I'm going to finish off this gray. I'm going to finish that off while this video is uploading. And then, um, when I come back to do another video, I'm going to have another set of all the balls, all the colors from the pink. I'm going to have a pink, a darker pink, a fuchsia, a purple, a white, a variegated, and a gray. I'm just going to do all those balls again in various sizes. They all won't be the same exact size, although they might look it, but they're not wound like, you know, because I'm just winding them up on my hand. But, um, so I'm going to do this again, and it'll be, you know, random. But that's what I'm doing, and I like the way it's turning out. I love it. But I appreciate you watching, and if you are making a video, please post in the Llama Mama, Kayla, and Big Daddy group. I'm going to, um, try to remember to get on there and look at some I, I do whenever i post this photo i mean this video up on there i always scroll down to see a little bit but then i also, also always got something else i gotta run do too so but anyway guys i will see you all in the next video remember it's a beautiful day to crochet and i love you guys bye friends